This is Amy Baker here with some tips about how to inoculate your child from becoming alienated. So the first is to do everything you can to enhance the existing attachment relationship you have with your child. That means making the most of the shared emotional moments that you have with your child, being loving and compassionate as much as you can, and uh, really trying to um, do everything you can to make the child feel close with you. Even if you're having a disagreement, there's a way to have a disagreement that still creates a feeling of love and connection. The second is don't take the bait. Alienated kids can be very provocative. They can push your buttons. And in a way, they're kind of testing. Do you really love me? I'm hearing from the other parent you don't. And so they might try to push you to do something that would be unsafe, unloving, and unavailable. You need to be prepared for that. You need to have lots and lots of alternative uh, discipline and parenting strategies so that you don't get into a position where you do or say something that would uh, confirm the negative message about you. The third point I want to make is that you can foster certain values in your child that will make it less likely that he or she will become alienated. Those values are compassion, integrity, and forgiveness. And if you can do everything you can to foster and encourage your child to identify as a person who values compassion, who is forgiving, and has integrity, knows what he thinks, knows what uh, his beliefs are, then it'll be less likely that child will become alienated. The next is to invite criticism. And that means saying to your child every once in a while, hey, how am I doing? What could I do to be a better parent? Is there anything that is bothering you about me or about our relationship? It doesn't mean you have to grovel if they say they're upset about something. It doesn't mean you have to give them a million dollars if they say that's what would make them happier. But you can um, sort of nip uh, problems in the bud before they fester. You don't want the child taking his or her criticism to the other parent. No no good's going to come from that. So you want to make sure that your child feels comfortable coming to you and saying, hey, it sort of hurt my feelings when you did this or that. Praise your child when they come to you with the criticism rather than, you know, how dare you? or Why would you do that? Or who told you to think that? You know, always start with, thank you so much for telling me that you're upset. And then the final thing is to enhance your child's critical thinking skills. Get your child aware of the idea that you, that uh, ideas come from somewhere. They don't just, you know, pop into your head, that there's facts, that there's truth. And you want your child to think about thinking so that if one day he says, you know, you never loved me, you could, you could say, because it would be part of an ongoing conversation, oh, what an interesting idea. Where did that come from? How do you know that's true? What would happen uh, if I had evidence to the contrary? So you can uh, start by just talking to your child about the idea that um, we can think about how we come to our ideas and how we form our opinions so that your child is less susceptible of having a false, untrue belief about you planted in them. All right, so there's a lot more I could say about each of these five, but I hope that little tip is helpful. Thank you.